on top of the phone, practically. It's not a good look. All right, so um, because of your interest in Granddad, I told you that, that I, I was going to tell you he was a very early um, IBM salesman, and I think some of his salesman uh, personality came out in the little time he spent with us here on Floss Tube. But um, he he was very successful salesman um, throughout his life, and he had his own um, company, had some products that he sold software products that he sold and um, he just was always a go-getter and uh, what else am I going to tell you about him? Well anyway, here's a picture. I thought you'd like to see this little picture of him when he was little. He was German. His family was German immigrants around, you know, the turn of the century. There he is, a little blonde German boy. And you see those shoes? close up of those shoes. Here they are. Those are his little shoes from that picture. I think different laces, but um, I polished them and put some um, acid-free tissue in there, stuffed them a little bit, and I thought it would be really cute to do a shadow box, kind of like this. That. Uh, I found a guy on Etsy that I might ask to make those. And the cute thing is I also have um, my husband Frank's mother's little picture and her shoes, her little high top shoes. They're white and they're like baby dolls, but they have the three like little button closures up at the top. And um, I have that picture. I thought it'd be cute to have two shadow boxes. Anyway. Um, so later I'll do a little, a little bit more family history because I love family history. But um, so what have I, a couple things I have gotten. I know I said I do whips, but what am I doing? Things I've gotten. Um, my sister, my um, sister in Cincinnati got me this at a needlepoint shop there. She didn't know about keepsakes, but when she went to this needlepoint shop, this is called Cincinnati Needlepoint. I do needlepoint too, so I think this will be cute, cute little ornament, very cute. Uh, when she went to this shop, they told her about keepsakes, and um, so she took me there, which was a lot of fun. It was nice to meet um, the shop owner, Barbara, and I took some video, but my video is not very good, and I had my phone turned wrong, and blah, blah, blah. So, um, but I did buy a few things. I didn't have them with me. I think I have one thing with me that, that I'll talk about later. And I am so sorry. I did not bring a lot of my uh, patterns in, but so I don't have that pattern, but you'll, you'll probably know what I'm talking about when I get to it. But one thing that she had was, she had this like um, upstairs on the wall, she had this uh, big long, you know, rectangular this way uh, sampler and it was beautiful. It had beautiful colors and it, but it was a, a spot sampler. So it just had like the motif spots and it's a Spanish sampler, it has a different name, like Spanish name or something. And I will have to show that in another video because I don't have it in here. But I really liked it, and she had some conversions. And while I was looking around, um, my mom and sister were outside on the porch, and they're not cross stitchers, so I had to kind of rush through there. Um, but she, Barbara, pulled the the floss for me, and um, and I bought the pattern, and I got the linen, and I'm excited to start it. But I got a lot of things to finish, and some huge ones before I can start that. That is on my list of uh, definite do, and I will show you that. So, um, okay, next. I'm doing, this is a whip. This is a current whip. I've only been working on it a couple of days, but I have to finish it like tonight, maybe, while my husband's got the poker club over here. <laughs> It'll be loud, and I'll just have to like hole up in my room. Uh, our 
local stitch in group, which is part of the Embroiderers Guild, is doing a joint project. And the project is um, Altoid boxes. This is an old one I did. Um, it was a freebie, and it was... I, can, I can't remember the name of the, the people who put this freebie out there on the internet, and they, they told you how to, to finish it. So this is a magnet, you know, like a sh magnet sheet, stick on, and then I put this in. It's got some polyfill under there. Um, glued this, stitched around the top. I like to stitch wherever I can. So anyway, that was it's just a little sewing kit. Oh, and my scissors. I stuck them in something else over here to show you the other day. Um, but anyway, your scissors fit. What the heck did I do with it? Your scissors fit under this right there. It's just a little tiny pair of scissors. So we're doing this again, and I, I updated my pattern. I wanted to... I thought I wanted to do something samplery or some such, some such thing, and I used a scrap that was in my stash of linens. This is um, not my favorite, but it's actually working out really well. It's it's a, a blend of some sort, even weave um, blend, but I swear it's like 40 count, and I'm doing it over one. So I got lots of little Quaker motif on there. I'm going to put 2017 down here. Um, I'll have to create the 7 because it's not on the pattern. This pattern, is, I'm pretty sure, this pattern, I won't show it very long, but I'm pretty sure that's a, a freebie. And I want to say it's on the DMC site, but don't quote me on that. But anyway, uh, I should, should have looked that up again, but I didn't. Um, so I'll put like, you know, more motif over here, maybe a little something else over here. And then on, um, tomorrow we are supposed to be doing the cording and I've done cording, but it's been a long time and I never had one of those machine things. I had a pencil and I just, you know, had a big long thing and I twist, 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 twist around a, you know, had the, had it looped around the, the top of a chair and, you know. So um, people are supposed to bring their, their little drill tools or something, and we're going to do that tomorrow. And I'm just going to do the most likely red, same thing. This is a salmon color that is a salmon DMC. I think it's very dark salmon or something like that, but it looks like bright. I guess if I get it closer, you can see it's kind of salmon, but it looks like bright red, like bright, bright red. I like it on this. This is kind of like a grayish taupe. So I'm happy with that. And I also received in the mail the spools that go with this that I have been working on. Um, you know, so you can roll it up. It's very long, very long, very long. And I'm very far behind. But I'm up to like, like little lesson four or something like that. There's 28. They just finished this in the stitch along group. I'm sure you can. She, uh, Carol Ridyard from I Stitch Designs is the one who did this. It's called the Blue Band Sampler, and there's going to be a Red Band Sampler. A lot of people have finished it. It's just beautiful. Um, so I'm really happy that I'm, and it's fun to do, and. Everything, you know, the little short parts, you feel like you really accomplished something. So um, look that up. And if you don't want to do the blue, in um, January, she is doing a red band sampler. And it looks like it's going to, there's a preview um, on this site, the, this stitch along, and it looks like it's going to be really pretty. I'm probably not going to do it simply because next year I want to work on what I have going already. I think that's going to be my resolution. We'll see how that goes. So, those two I've been working on. I've also been working on this. And I, I'm so upset because I don't think I'm going to get this done by my son's birthday, December 8th or December 25th. And he asks me all the time, you know, how's that going, Mom, on my thing you're making for me? He doesn't know I'm making this. 
uh, unless he happened to notice that I posted on Instagram. I wish I hadn't, but um, he is excited and I'm not working on this often enough to get it finished, I don't think. Okay. In no particular order. We're going through, we're going through the whips. This is the whip parade <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay, last year when I was at my, my oldest sister's, I have two older sisters and one younger sister. This sister um, is the one in Cincinnati. She's a very, she's an exceptional artist. She's in galleries and she is very dedicated and paints every day, beautiful painting. And um, she is five years older than me. This sister in Birmingham is nine years older. And I go visit her a couple times a year. Once, once or twice a year we get together. And last year, I, when I was at her house, I just had crammed this in my things to do. This is, well, this is a DMC. Maybe that other one wasn't a DMC freebie. This is a DMC freebie from Common Thread, designed by Lois Winston. And this, I think, is on DMC site. Anyway, that's, that's what it looks like. That's not the pattern. But it's nice variegated plus, and I just, I like it. So I think I'd seen somebody do this, like maybe on the Prim Stitchers. I don't know why I grabbed this piece. It's, it's too pale. And I went to Stitcher's Haven and I bought this Valdani, this variegated. They're not the same, but I think they'll work out. Whoop, boop. And maybe I might even have enough in one of these. I've never used this before, but it's fine. I started using it. I don't have a problem with it. Um, I like the colors. So I did that and then I counted and realized I did not have a big enough piece of linen. So I found, started, I threw it, and once again threw it in, um, I was going to watch a football game and I thought, well, I don't know if I'll be intently watching a football game. So I threw this piece in, and this color is much better for that. However, this is an over dyed, um, I don't know what it is, but it's so stiff. I guess it's R&R &R or um, Picture This Plus or Weeks. It came when I bought somebody's Blackbird Designs pattern. Um, this was included in it. And I bought the patterns to, to put them together to do that um, mystery sampler. So I was going to use a big piece anyway. So I just had this left and um, oops, that's the wrong one. Hello. See, that would be cute. That would be cute on there. Much better. It's so scratchy. I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. I might. And, you know, again, this may get put away until next year. Another whip I have. Just had it. So it has to be here very close by. All right, when I find it, we'll do that one. Okay, um, big whip, large whip. Oh, this one I have been working on also in my Hawk Run Hollow group. And I have been working on that yellow house, which is not really yellow after you do this yellow, which I, I think I've finished or almost finished with the yellow. Uh, I think I'm, yeah. You go over it with some larger X's, uh, blue. So it, it tones it down toward kind of, kind of like a green, kind of like a paler version of, of this green. And it blends in better. And then the black is coming in because this one is in um, the, the nighttime. So you, the whole square is black. And all the lightness of this, it's really weird when you're stitching it because you're like, this is so light, you know, you barely see it. 
it just kind of bugged me because <laughs> I don't know it was just so light but it's supposed to be like I guess moonlight shining on the house and everything because I mean you've got that look at that this the, the fencing when you're doing it you know it's this pale pale ecru and white down there this is white on here um, but anyway when I finish it it's gonna look good it's just it's an odd one to work on with that nighttime um, so I'll be working on that uh, in a week at Caroline's house for our Hawker and Hollow stitch along I don't know if I'll work on it uh, we have a, a big um, chili and soup stitch in Saturday that uh, we sponsor every year and we invite the other sampler guilds and the um, American Needlework Guild folks. Everybody comes. It's in a big room. We have lots of pots of um, chili and soup and um, breads and salads and desserts. And it's really fun. So we'll be doing that. It'll be fun to see everybody. Um, I, I enjoyed that a lot last year. Last year was my first time. Um, and, okay. Here, I did pull this out the other day, punch needle. This is my first and only punch needle. It's a Teresa Kovic pattern. And um, it. when I first started it, I would just say, who, somebody is going to do this. I think it's, um, uh, is it Marlene? Stitching by the Lake. Um, she was saying that she was about to start a, or wanted to do punch needle. And she hadn't done it before and um, I would highly recommend it it's it's different but it's really cool and it's very forgiving it really is forgiving when you get in here and you know you you'll have like a little piece sticking up and you just clip that off in here and, and it's so tight together that you know you never would notice it um, this was not an easy pattern to start with but I don't think I ever do easy <laughs> well maybe sometimes um, just because it's got such tiny areas, you know, when you're doing something that's got more bigger area, you can get in the swing of it better. It's just really getting used to it. Once you get in the rhythm, it, you're fine. So, um, down here, oh, and the, I don't know if you know how they go, but you, you tra either trace the pattern or maybe you buy one that has it on it, but I traced it with a pencil and then you are punching on this side. This side is flat. You're punching a little around in this side within the pattern and it comes out over here. This is the right side. So anyway, that's it. Um, you have to have the Cameo um, punch needle or at least I think you have to have the Cameo punch needle because it works really well. And um, I'll put that down there because we've been through that one. Okay, next. Bittersweet September. I did this on a lot lighter. This is on an even weave. I had it in my stash. It's a lot lighter than a lot of people's. I like it. It's kind of a kind of a creamy, you know, it kind of goes with the colors of this. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm not sure. It's big. For, for a small pillow, this is uh, probably like six by six or seven by seven or something pretty large but that's fine i just need to finish it there's a theme running along here here's another little one little house needleworks proverbs cute gentle art flosses called for not much to it, not many flosses used, but it's fun. This is the stitch, let's take the long way home stitch along. You've seen this several times. Got that far, haven't done any more. And I love it. I love this pattern. It's really cute. Really, really cute. So I will finish this. I think it says, let's take the long way home. And then on the bottom it says, over the river and through the woods cute. Next we have Adam and Eve. 
Haven't done Adam. Haven't finished Eve. Like it. I like it. Need to work on it. Um, Lori, Mr. Stitches started this stitch along. I call it the house with the yellow door. And I have way too much fabric. <laughs> and apparently I was using a, a hoop. I haven't worked on this in a couple months, but um, the last thing I did was over on the side here. It's pretty. I'm using all the called for floss. All the floss is DMC. And I can't remember what this uh, linen is. Exemplar, light exemplar, um, something, something like that. Something the usual that I use. Smoky Mountain Christmas. Haven't worked on this since June or July. Cannot wait to to work on it again. Just got other things in the shoot. It's going to be cute. Cute, cute, cute. This is an even weave. It's a piece that I had. Um, I think the count is the same count I was supposed to use and I don't remember what it is. That's a pattern that usually you have to download. Um, there's a PDF of it somebody sells because it was an older pattern and of course um, it was done by Dina, and um, Dina in Georgia, Dina, well, Dina, which one is she? Half stitch, cross stitch, Dina Hudgens. There's two Dinas in Georgia who are floss tubers. <laughs> okay, the other one is the teacher. One's blonde, one has, one's brunette. I'm talking about the brunette. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so bad with names. Okay, this is the this is my old one. I've shown it several times. I believe I did this flower down here. Probably like in the past two months. I think I showed it before. I still love this. I want to put it in our new um, rental house. Somewhere where nobody will touch it. Somewhere up high. Like over the doorway or something. Or maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should do rental suite rental or something. I don't know. What do you put in a rental house? Obviously things you don't want damaged. Here's my little joyful world, Snowflower Diaries. Somebody in my stitching group asked me if I had um, finished this. The answer is no. I will finish it. I love this. Enjoy working on it. It's so sweet. It's nice to get a finish every time you do a month. But I just can't do everything at once. And there's so many cute things to do. This was a freebie. This is, uh, I think it's called Easter Parade. Um, that's how far I got with the bunny rabbit. He has a cart and I think chicks. And I, it, I like this kind of chocolatey. Is this called chocolate? Weeks Dye Works? Um, chocolate or chestnut or something like that. Uh, I don't like the Weeks Dye Works fabric. It's too loose for my taste. It's just too loose and limp, limp, limpish. But um, I think this is going to be really cute and I'll make it into like a little pillow. And it, the, you know, when you're working with this loose Weeks, you just always feel like, you know, your tension is maybe a little loose with your stitches. It's not, I'm not a loose stitcher, but it's just, it's harder. It's harder to get the tension, I think, when you've got that loose weave. Okay. I know I showed this, but I'll show it again. I didn't get much further. I think I last worked on this in um, August or September, and you've seen it, but this is um, 36 count, 1 over 2, and it's... Um, the lovely Prairie Schooler ABCs in the middle, starting with N is for nest. I love this. I will. I can't wait to work on it again. But 
kind of like um, the Hawk Run Hollow and this, you know, like they both have the design things and the changes and everything, the details that make me really enjoy working on them. And the, and the changes, you know, you, you do a square, you do another square. It's just fun. It's fun to do that. Switching around. This is the one that I, I bought up at Keepsakes, and it's that, I can't remember the name of it, but that's little, it's that little pumpkin head girl. It's, it's a, um, I think it's Brenda Gervais, and it's that little pumpkin head girl, and she has on that little um, purple, little is my favorite word I discovered when I looked at that video, that floss tube I did yesterday or the day before. She has this, the, see, I say little <laughs> purple dress with the cream collar and she's standing there it's cute I wanted to do it for Halloween I wanted to stitch it in seconds that didn't happen so I'll be working on it again next Halloween or before I don't mind I, I, I work off season this is the same sampler I've had forever years and years and years one of my i think it's probably my oldest cross stitch and i haven't that's how far i've gotten not much further i need to put stitches in everything i need to do one of those things where you touch everything and put stitches in it this is almost finished i need to finish it and and come and fully finish it because it's very cute don't know when i will though this i picked up i, I you know i bought this a bunch of old magazines in Birmingham in September, first of September when I went to see my sister, or end of August, and I just happened to find this, and I can't, what is the name? I just saw the name again. Y'all may, may recognize it, but it's not a common, common person. I don't think she does them anymore, but it was just this little quickie and I did almost finish this before Halloween. All I needed to do was put the, take this yellow and put it in the middle of those little flowers up there. And I didn't finish it. It also had a key down here. And because I also don't you know, like read the patterns all the way through or everything printed on the pattern, I didn't, and I really, I was doing this and I'm like out flying. Okay, she's out flying. But what does the key have to do with anything? And then I read on the front of the pattern that you're supposed to make this into like a little uh, pillow and set it beside your car keys and you in a little basket or something by your car keys on, on a desk and you are out flying. Get it? <laughs> Pretty cute. <laughs> but anyway, I changed her coloring to this green because um, she was kind of like a pinky, too pink looking, and I thought she should be green. I think that's the only thing I changed. Uh, this may be a different color than, or something close to what was called for. Um, this is General Arts, General Arts, and I think the rest was DMC that I had. Oh, maybe that was General Arts. I may have had that. Anyway, didn't complete, almost complete. Here's an oldie from last year or so. Uh, last thing I worked on was gifts to you, his chart, his uh, list, and I haven't done anything else. And I like it when I when I do work on it. I like it. I'm finished. Um, this was a journey piece. I was supposed to finish it this year uh, by October. Didn't get it done. But my challenge person, Deb, did get hers finished and framed, and it looks beautiful. So I need to one day look at that. Here's a little Freedom. I think across the bottom it says Freedom. Uh, little House Needleworks. You saw this. I changed the color to this blue-gray because it, the front is supposed to be cream. But um, I think that looks okay. I'm happy with that. I just need to complete this and I really like it. I enjoy that. Okay, 
exercise on the sparrow. I've seen several people doing this, working on this, and um, that's how far I've gotten. Every time I see the person working on this on Instagram, I'm like, oh, I need to. I wish I was working on mine. Because again, I love it, and all the little motifs make it fun. You're not working on one thing. I don't know. I I couldn't do like. Some of the haids that it's like sky forever or a dress like 35 colors of you know green and a dress skirt or something i don't know that would drive me nuts i would think okay and you may wonder how i'm doing on my um, prairie schooler quilt well i haven't done very much the only thing i've done since we discussed it is right here I did I did two leads two holly leads but hey that's two more holly leads than it had before and I got involved in that um, mystery sampler spirit of Christmas I don't know if you want to see it so I'm covering it up this is part three that has the whole um, pattern Lizzie Kate, 2017. Um, I love the colors. It's very cute. And I started it when I got the first one in September. And that's as far as I got. This is kind of a car piece. I know I've worked on this in the car twice. And I don't know. I guess I worked on it once here. So... I like it. I like everything. I like, there isn't anything I'm like working on or have put aside that I don't want to work on, which is really tells me that I need to work on these next year and not start anything else. So y'all please keep me on the path. Keep me on the path. All right. Um, recent acquisitions. I believe that that is all of my starts and stops whips I do believe we covered it so recent acquisitions not a lot something I really 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 wanted something I like That's about it. And I, and something that, another thing that I really like that someone made, and I'm going to show you. All right. Arlene Cohen had the, it was funny. This is funny too. Arlene Cohen had um, acquired a whole bunch of patterns. And so she sold them on her, a couple weeks ago, she sold them on her floss tube. I'm sure you probably saw them. And if you, you were supposed to tell her, she lit, she showed them and she told the price and it was a lot. It was like, I think like something like 186 or something. At the time, I was going to my basket class up in the mountains. I did that for eight weeks on a Thursday. And um, I was, happened to be going up, I have to drive about 30 or 40 miles up one highway and then um, I turn toward this town, and then I go, I don't know how many miles, 15 miles or something, through um, an area called Blood Mountain. The Appalachian Trail is somewhere up in there. You know, it's like a main hiker place and everything, but it is, the, the road signs are like this. You know, I mean, it is windy. Sometimes you just go all the way around, you almost loop over yourself. Um, I love driving in the mountains because I have I've done it forever since my mother lives in the you know Smokies. <laughs> so, um, but I was and it, it's amazing because I play floss tube on my phone and I sit it. It's got my phone has a magnet on the back of it and I just click it onto the magnet like that I've stuck on. I can't remember where I got these things, but they're just the little magnet. The, on my phone is, I guess, steel, and then the thing it clicks onto is a magnet. 
on the car next to the radio. So I just click it on there and then I listen to Foss Tube and I can glance from time to time. So Arlene was on there and I am in the mountains and I mean, I'm way up and I'm way down. And most of the time I have reception. I listen to other people, but I distinctly recall coming home, making all those turns and everything and listening to Arlene or waiting until she starts up again because it did stop. And she was going through this list and I was like, Oh, I gotta write it down, gotta write it down, gotta remember this and that. And I was, while I'm driving through all that, I'm jotting stuff down with my pencil. It was probably dangerous, but there weren't very many people up there. The ones who were up there knew how to drive. <laughs> anyway, so um, I had a couple I wanted. I know one of the ones I wanted was um, The Good Housewife, Ivy Wed. I love that one. I love the people on there. Um, but that was gone really fast. All the ones I wanted were gone except one. By the time I... I don't, I don't know the spacing between when she listed them and when I saw that or listened to that. So um, this, the one I got was this one. Adam names The Creatures. This prairie schooler. Pretty darn cute. Pretty darn cute. So very happy with that. That was that was nice of Arlene to do that. That was that was a cool way to, to do that too. Give everybody a chance. And um, then somebody on uh, one of the uh, Facebook groups was doing these, and I had to order this because. This designer, obviously I like her because I did all the Prairie Schoolers, but Pamela Bird, Brinky Bird or whatever, I think she she had a couple names over the years, um, did these angels. And I love this. This is out of print. I don't know if it's coming back in print, but when I went to look for it on Etsy, um, I found three people selling them. I purchased this one and it was like $25 but I knew I wanted it and I was gonna I'm gonna stitch them together I'm going to stitch them on they were stitched on black uh, 18 count I believe to begin with well you can stitch them yeah the cover models were stitched on 18 count black Ada uh, with over two and that makes them three and five eighths by two and three quarters inches. I really, I wanted them, oops, I wanted them big, but that's not very big. I mean, they make cute ornaments, but I wanted them, I kind of want them kind of large. I guess I could do them on whatever I wanted to do them on. Gosh, let's see. Well, if you do them on, 14 count, they're three and a half by four and five eighths. Eight count, six by eight. I'll probably do them small. I'm gonna do them on a dark. What is that dark? If you know what that dark, um, is it Picture This Plus or um, R&R that, that is like dark, kind of smoky looking, kind of bluish, blackish. If you know what that color is, could you please um, let me know down below? Because I love that. That's what I think I would like to do it on. Somebody else did it. Somebody on Instagram did them, I think on Instagram, with a gold background. And that was pretty too, but that, that black looks good. And like a dark, just a dark, dark, I think, midnight blue black or something. Not really blue, it's more it's like a gray black and kind of cloudy looking. That would be nice. Anyway, love those. I don't know when I'll start those. Um I think that's all I've gotten with those. Don't let me forget to show you the Christmas items. Because now I'm going into project bags. Okay, when I started project bags, it was in the summer. I think I showed this. I think I showed this one that I, I went to my sister's in September and I went we went thrifting. This was Birmingham and I bought a, somebody's backpack that they had sewed. 
sewed up and um, this was the inside this was the outside bought it for $2.99 at a thrift store Walk, came home washed it bought the zipper and made the Avery Claire um, style bag front zip bag this is heavy because my flannel my I use cotton flannel not a fan of anything with glue or starch or anything that's going to touch my fabric I'm like a real purist so um, I love using the cotton flannel however uh, this is kind of heavy I use too heavy of a flannel too heavy much of a heavier weight um, the next one I did was this one this is some fabric I bought for something else and just hadn't used it's Joann's and I, I always I have a bunch of linen just like sewing linen that I've bought wherever and I had bought yards and yards of this at uh, the Atlanta Mission thrift store it was gorgeous some designer had it left over or something I made a box pleat um, dust ruffle for my king size bed and I had this left over so I just used it and I actually had this zipper from, left over from my mother's stash sewing stash and inside this was a pillowcase that I bought because I was looking for flesh color to make a doll for somebody in the needlework repair somebody's doll was destroyed so I just remade her doll anyway this I like it's big like 14 by 16 and I like these project bags a lot they're, they're fun to make I mean it's fun to go like I made a project bag to put my projects in now I don't ever remember what's in here because I don't have you know the little I need to get some more of those little what you call them that you know I can write what it is on there or just quit being so scattered with my projects and I'd know what was in there the next bag I made was this little bag this um, I found this pattern online and it's really cute but she I felt like the designer the, the, the sewer did not describe very well how to do this and it's lined I never finished doing the bottom I didn't sew that together because I was disappointed because after all I'm persnickety but right here this didn't come together very well and it bothers me it bothers me I know that it, it just bothers me uh, so anyway whatever and um, then my sister my Birmingham sister older sister uh, two years ago I for some reason decided to make a mini tote bag pin cushion I followed a tutorial online and I want to say that the name of the place is poor house quilts maybe farmhouse quilts I think it's poor house quilts I'm not sure but anyway this was it and I made the mistake of texting this to my sister right around her birthday and she's like I know what I want for my birthday a mini tote bag pin cushion so I said oh my gosh this was so hard and I'm not totally happy with it so she didn't get it and I always thought after I finished it I liked it but I always thought that the pocket where you can put your scissors I don't know what the heck I've done with my scissors I thought the pocket looked like a post-it note <laughs> so I didn't like it because this looked like a post-it note <laughs> I don't know why I use that yellow I have no idea why I use that yellow it was just these were scraps all scraps and you make the the tote and it's like a little lined tote see I you can see my my lining in there of course that's my some more flannel um, there you go and then you make just a little regular little pillow and you stuff the little pillow in there and that's your pin cushion so I made yeah I want to do 
with my little scissors I must have used them so this is her so um, that was two years ago this year when I was over there we were going around to places um, we went to a yarn shop and I said look over there they have quilt fabric in the yarn shop and I said why don't you pick your fabric for your tote I think I had we had mentioned it on the way or something and she I said something about your tote I said you didn't get it last year or you know I know you asked for it last year and didn't get it and she goes no I asked for it two years ago she remembered I mean she really wanted this tote so she picked out fabric and this is her little mini tote pin cushion from the tutorial um, and I did better this time actually what I did was I did this was my prototype this is mine because after all I didn't like that one that looked like a post-it note so I wanted to make one that I liked now I have not made the pillows yet but the insides I did better this time she said I could zigzag the, the tutorial person said I could zigzag so I zigzagged and actually my so they look those look better and she my sister's favorite color is purple so she got a lot of purple in there probably I should have done this purple and this peach because a lot of the bottom shows but I don't know what do you think cute aren't they cute they're pretty cute so I just have to finish that and she hasn't gotten it yet her birthday was October 24th I'm like terrible she knows that I have um, finished these finished this she knows it's finished um, and she knows that I'm making her something else and I have gone off with the fabric I'm making her but let me just say excuse me that um, I thought well I, I was at the store getting some fabric and I thought I'm gonna get some fabric for some more project bags and so I've got um, enough for to make me two more and then I thought, well, I'm going to make her a project bag. And so I got some pretty fabric. It's something along the lines of this. It's it's pur purpley bluish. But I got two, and I realized I should have gotten an accent fabric. And the reason I realized that is because right after I got that fabric, I watched Suzette, Primitive Stitcher's um, project bag tutorial. And Suzette... I, can I just say, I don't know if you're watching, but you did an excellent job. Anybody who wants to make a project bag can follow your excellent tutorial and make it. So I highly encourage you, if you haven't made one, to um, go over there and watch her tutorial. I scribbled notes. This time I wasn't in the car scribbling. I was sitting and watching and I scribbled notes. And I stopped it and I went back if I missed something. And then, because I'm anal, I typed it up. Primitive Stitcher's Project Bag Tutorial. Um, now she will tell you that she used, she when she first made a bag, and she makes a ton. I mean, she makes one for, like, I would have 22 project bags if I were Suzette. One for every one of my projects. I wonder how big the bag would have to be if I did one for my prairie schooler quilt. <laughs> anyway, um, so I typed up everything, materials, steps, um, length and width, interfacing cuts, uh, and then at the end, and I, and I made corrections as I went, so I'll probably retype this, <laughs> adding in the corrections. And then I, because I, I don't know what was wrong with me, but I, seems like I, you know, I just don't have all this down really well. And let me just say that, you know, I'm, I'm particular, but, you know, like Suzette was very, very kind to say this. And when you're somebody like me who just, it, it's very hard for somebody who's a perfectionist to make mistakes and get over it you kind of beat yourself up but Suzette makes you feel so much better because she, she hers like to me I'm like well you know if I could just do them perfect like hers 
Um, she says, nothing's perfect. It's just a project bag after all. Why do we care? And that's good to know because, I mean, I can tell she's very careful with hers too. So don't worry about it. You know, if it doesn't bother me, you shouldn't be bothered with it not looking perfect. And it's just me anyway. It's not, you know, I, I'm not that hard on anybody but me. So, um, so mine is slightly different, maybe an inch off or something here and there. You know, I got, my dimensions are accurate to my dimensions, but they're not exactly her same ones. So I had, um, with this one that I'm about to show you, um, last September, I, I, my husband and I went to Savannah for the weekend. And um, I just took along a quickie project. I just, you know, kitted something up real quickly. This I had um, taken off. I liked it because it's Quaker. Um, it's got two colors. I like the two colors in it. I did not change them. I used exactly what it was called for, the two DMC colors. And um, I used some stash linen. And then I ended up with this little piece and I, I hadn't used it. It was finished, but not fully finished. And so then my sister, second oldest sister in Ohio, the, the artist, had, used to be a, um, a doll artist. And so she used to make these beautiful art dolls and she had a lot of fabric left over. We went up in the attic and she just handed me some fabric one time when I was up there. I said, yeah, I might use it for whatever. I didn't know what I was gonna use it for. And so I just had it, and it perfectly matched. So here is my Suzette Permanent Stitcher project bag. Look, Suzette, I did it. And with my free fabric, this is the Stitcher hood. Freebie, the Stitcher hood. Reminds me of our Savannah trip. This is my lining. I also had this lining from I don't know what. I have no idea. And this right here is a seam. Is where I seamed this lining together all the way down. And no one would ever know it. It's on the front inner part. You won't nobody would ever see it. But I know I did it because that's I cut wrong. I don't I was cutting wrong all day long for some reason. And then way down here in the corner you can't see this either. But somewhere down here inside in the corner I had a piece of chunk. I, I was off this much because I had cut up all my, these were, these were just remnants and I had cut up all my pieces and I didn't have one big enough. So I had to piece that corner too. And who would ever see that? You can't even see down in there. I can't even feel it. So there you go. Make mistakes. Who cares? You can't tell. Who can tell? Nobody. And she mentions the fact that you could use, like I have all these old metal zippers that were my mother's. Most of them like are seven inches or nine inches. You could make a project bag with the zip, the metal zipper, but you know you'd have to make a seven or nine inch wide one up here. Um, if you get a nylon zipper, as long as it's long enough, you can have it this much longer and just cut it off. And it's easier to find all different sizes. Like when I went to to get the zippers for the three that I was going to make. I got like a, I got a, this calls for a 14 inch. I got a 14 inch, a 18 inch, and a 22 inch. And they will all work for a 14 inch bag. So, you know, dig up your old zippers if you have some. I've gone over an hour. I've gone over an hour. Yikes. This is a project bag roll. I mean a project bag roll. A project roll. <laughs> roll that um, some uh, ladies made to sell in our Magnolia Sampler Guild. We, we have two sam we're fortunate to have two Sampler Guilds here. The other Guild members made this one and I bought it. I don't remember how much it was, 20 something? But it's so nice. Look, here's the cotton flannel inside here. You can put your project under there, put the flannel over it to keep it safe, and roll it up. Tie it up and carry it with you. And I like the ends; they're they're smushy, like you could like a pin cushion. You put some pins in there. Um, so this is great 
and my um, my Harper and Hollow fits in here almost. It hangs out a little over a little bit. I mean, I, I haven't cut. I don't. I'm scared to cut my linen. Cut it wrong. Cut it too short. I just keep it huge from now on. I did that once and it scared me. So, um, okay. Now, before I forget, Christmas gifts for sampler enthusiasts or just anybody. The first year I asked for this. Um, the Feller Collection, and this group is Collection 1, which goes through, this is a private collection. These people, oh my gosh, y'all, this is the most beautiful book. The most beautiful book. Let me just show you the contents. Now these are the earlier ones. The next one is the later ones, I believe. I do believe. Look at this contents. Table of contents. Yes. Look, it goes on and on. And then it starts. Right, let me show you some pages. It, it's beautiful. And, you know, I rem remember one thing I was thinking about when 